around his dire polling position before a general election later on this year. So how does the British public, so far as we know now, regard this scheme? Professor Sir John Curtis, a polling expert, of course, and politics professor at the University of Strathclyde, and I'm hoping he can help me here. John, very, very good to see you. There has been quite a lot of polling specifically on the Rwanda scheme. What, is the he what are the headlines from that, would you say? Well, I think there are probably three headlines. One is that most polling finds rather more people in favour than against, though it does depend a bit on how you word the question. The second thing to say, however, is that it's something that very clearly divides Conservative voters uh, from Labour supporters. Conservative voters are keen on the idea. For the most part, Labour voters tend not, not to like the idea, which is perhaps one of the reasons why Labour um, are willing to back it. The third is that the public are sceptical about whether or not it will actually work. Um, so even though mm. they might in principle think it's a good idea, some of them are not necessarily sure it's going to happen. Um, so to that extent, at least, it's, I mean, we've heard politicians on both sides of the argument claiming the public think, they think this and think that. The truth is it's an issue on which the public are reasonably evenly divided in many respects. And presumably there's no way of knowing at all as to whether the public in the end would give Rishi Sunak, as it were, the credit for trying, even if the whole thing failed. Well, all we can really do, Andrew, is to look at what are the things that are associated with the decline in Conservative support in this Parliament. In other words, is it the case that those people who think that immigration, whether legal or illegal, has been going up a lot, are there, and who voted Conservative in 2019, are they more or less likely than uh, other uh, 2019 Conservative voters to be willing to say they're going to vote Conservative again? And the remarkable thing, and I've done this with all sorts of data sets, etc., is you find there isn't much difference. In other words, it's not clear that immigration, although it's an issue that does indeed upset many 2019 Conservative voters, it seems to be a little bit of a bite your lip issue. In other words, if all you are concerned about, about the current government, is, this, is the level of immigration, you might still be willing to vote for them. But if, but if on the other hand, you're concerned but almost about nobody the, in that the state of the economy, then you really are more concerned. So that's point one. But the other point, of course, is that actually, since the Conservatives have been focusing on this issue back in November of last year, that has been the period during which, for the most part, the reform of taking off and in a sense advertising what many voters regard as a bit of a policy failure it's not necessarily the best way of winning the back unless of course all of a sudden they can turn it into a policy success john you've made it very clear that in your view the game is pretty much up for the conservatives at this sure. point in the cycle um now do i take it from that that even if this worked for them, it's not big enough to turn things around properly. In other words, the economy, NHS and stuff is still so much more overwhelmingly more important than Rwanda. Uh, well, indeed. Um, and, you know, what you can also do, what I've done is to say, well, let's just assume that there's the biggest turnaround in the polls uh, eight months out from election, which is of the order of around six points, narrowing of the lead. And let's also assume the polls are as wrong as they were in 1992 you still end up with Labour five or six points ahead. And here we have to remember one other crucial thing. The Conservatives are short of friends in the House of Commons. A Labour uh, minority administration can look to anticipate that the Liberal Democrats and the SNP would, would not in the immediate term at least bring mm -hmm. them down. The Conservative Party cannot assume the same. Yeah. In other words, the Liberal Democrats and the SNP will vote down a Conservative King speech, they will not vote down a Labour one. And that, in the end, is absolutely cru potentially crucial to the party's prospects so, of forming a government. So, John, if we try and put ourselves, as it were, in the mind of Rishi Sunak, it may be that what he is trying to do is not win an election here, but um, moderate the scale of the defeat, and thinking particularly of Reform UK versus Conservative switchers, people he might bring back in and stop that becoming an overwhelming, crushing defeat. Well, yes, insofar as there's an electoral calculation behind this, I think that's right. I think, all, however, I'd also give him the credit of believing that he's doing what he think is right. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily think that what he's doing is right, but I think he clearly takes the view that... Mm. Uh, I coming think across does. the channel and so-called uh, jumping the queue is not acceptable. So I think, you know, and, and this is something on which probably 
quite a lot of his Conservative MPs believe in it. I mean, in the end, for the most part, what we've seen from the Conservative Party under Rishi Sunak is an attempt is to return to traditional Conservative tunes of a smaller state, lower taxes, lower immigration. The problem is, of course, is that in focusing on all of that, they're fighting against their own record doing this Parliament. And that is very, very...